Hello and welcome to part 28 of the IO Development Diary and uh, I'm just, this is going to be a quick uh, few minutes this part today I'm not actually showing you any code or anything, I'm just uh, showing you an editor script I'm uh, currently working on and uh, I'll be then showing you how I made this in the, the next part uh, this is just to give you a little heads up on, uh, it's only basic functionality uh, currently added but that's just going to give you some uh, sort of grounding uh, base to sort of work from. To say I'm a sort of a a, a magic editor script uh, coder would be uh, would be a, a falsity because I'm not. I only use editor scripts for my own sort of uh, basic needs, just to sort of take out some of the sort of uh, repetitiveness of going up to sort of a uh, file, add empty game object, and add in and dragging in uh, components and things. Uh, Making an editor script just uh, gives you a way of sort of alleviating some of that sort of tedious and just uh, helps speeding up uh, processes uh, quite dramatically. The reason I'm I'm sort of doing this for the uh, waypoints uh, script is because uh, even though at the moment in the level we've only got sort of three uh, rooms we are currently looking at or we've actually got currently modelled and we are sort of breaking down more into sort of game related sort of scripting now like the AI and the waypoints and things there is going to become a time where I'm going to be adding more of a sort of a levels onto this uh, part and uh, when it comes to that stage I'm going to need something like this just to quickly bosh down waypoints and things and waypoint groups without the sort of need for sort of going back over the same ground time and time again so that's one of the main reasons for sort of starting this and what I'll do within this sort of tutorial series I won't make any more editor scripts really, I, well we might make a couple over the time but what we'll do for sort of tutorial purposes is that we'll just keep building on this one so like I say at the moment all we're doing in this script is basically mimicking what we were doing in the last few waypoint parts manually but using a script but then we will develop this further and we'll add real time sort of editing within the sort of uh, within here within the editor window so we can actually select uh, waypoints and waypoint groups from the editor script and uh, manipulate uh, sort of uh, positions and things uh, but what I'll do, I'll show you what we've done at the moment, I'll show you what stage I'm at the moment with this this has been about a day and a half I'll say a day and a half coding about four hours one evening and about two hours, so about six hours uh, to get this and while it doesn't look much, uh, there, there is there is quite a, a chore at times making these because the main thing that takes a long time in making an edit script is the GUI because at the end of the day you are looking at a visual representation aren't you so basically all a, all an editor script is a GUI and uh, I speak to a few Unity developers and they all sort of cringe when you hear the word editor scripts and they, you know, they want these grand ideas and they think that's too hard but to be honest there's nothing in this editor script which couldn't be in a game if that makes sense. You imagine having a game and having a title page. Say you, say you had an options page and you had a button here to click uh, graphics options, sound options, uh, information on the game, say, uh, gameplay options. So you'd have four buttons down there and you'd use the GUI classes to make those buttons. Well, an editor class is exactly the same. You're using the same GUI.label, GUI.button exactly the same and the code you're putting into them buttons is exactly the same as you'd have within a, within a game scenario, a level scenario so there's nothing different between writing a game sort of GUI and writing a script GUI, an editor GUI the only difference is during, you're using a couple more sort of includes at the top there's a, there's a, there's a couple of tweaks to the code itself uh, but it's nothing, you know, you, you could learn the couple of alterations in in 10 seconds and then you'd, you'd be good to go so what I've done here is nothing that you can't do at the stage you're at currently so at the moment I'll show you what I've done anyway uh, this is the sort of scene uh, from the waypoints as we last left I've deleted the actual group if you remember and the four waypoints uh, that we put down and I'll just add a couple of waypoints now using this editor script so if you go up to window I'm not sure if you can actually see the window pull down from the actual screen capture but you know the bar at the top and I've got a little uh, a thing here called uh, Waypoint Editor which I've added into this uh, menu <coughs> so that pops up this uh, the Waypoint Editor that's what I'll do, I'll just, I'll just drag this into here for now 
just so you can so it stays on screen. Because if not, every time you click on something outside of that window, you lose focus. Uh, there are ways in the editor to script to bring focus back and things, but like I say, this is this is only six hours work and. Uh, to be honest, four hours that was tweaking where the blooming buttons are going to be within like an X and Y position. So the actual code itself only probably took about half an hour. But like I say, when you're doing GUIs, that's just laying it out. And uh, on a side note, and I know I am sort of uh, rambling again, but uh, when GUIs, the way I've done it now is I've, I'm actually placing each button down individually. But there are ways of grouping GUIs into th groups and things with Unity. So where uh, like I don't use uh, GUI that much for anything to be honest within Unity but um, so if you're into GUIs now you, you're, you're going to find a far better way of coding this than I am but I'm just you know I'm just showing you functionality basically so uh, anyway you get this uh, thing come up saying welcome to the Waypoint Editor enter your group this is your block name like the sort of the, the higher sort of level so at the minute I'm just going to leave it as a default as a Waypoint block name and I'm just going to hit uh, create the block and you'll see up here now it's just created a basically it's created an empty game object called uh, waypoint block but hey you know I thought shit I should have called it a uh, cleaner robot because remember we're working on the cleaner robot so I oh, Christ I better change this so I'm just going to change that to cleaner robot and some gobbledygook and I'm going to hit rename and that'll just rename it up here but it's still the same but then you think oh Christ I've, I've just I've called it gobbledygook so uh, I should have called it block so basically you can just rename this thing as many times as you want and until you hit confirm that's just going to keep uh, renaming until the cows come home basically so then you you can click uh, confirm and now you you can't rename it anymore you can still type in here but you know you're, you're wasting your time basically and uh, it comes up now with this little pull down which is quite nice uh, and it's powered by an enumerated list within uh, the, the waypoint uh, controller class which we've we've made previously, but like I say, in the next video I'll show you how I did all these. So it just pulls down. I don't want to make this. Do you want to make this a single path or a looping or a ping pong, like we've said? But at the moment you'll see within the inspector if you click on the actual block, I default it just to uh, when it creates this game object and adds the script, it's just defaulting it to single path. But in this case I'm going to change it to to a loop, and I'm going to click uh, confirm type, and then you'll see it there. Uh, it's changed that to loop there. And now I'm going to enter a, a waypoint name. Uh, to be honest, I got I got fairly bored with adding buttons and like the rename button. So you haven't got an option to rename these, uh, but you can so you can always rename them up here. But when we if you remember when we made the scripts, uh, it didn't it didn't matter what these waypoint names are called, as long as the actual tag has got uh, WP like waypoint in it. The actual uh, names within the hierarchy are, are pretty, uh, you know, it's not important really. So. Uh, but like I say, when you're building this yourself, I can I can always add an extra functionality just to add a button in, like I did for the rename block. So I'm going to call this waypoint one anyway, and I'm going to just create it, and uh, I'll just go up here, and uh, you'll see it's now a child like we we had have before. It's added the tag of waypoint in there. Uh, it is just a waypoint, and it's, let's give it a number because it's the first one I've created. So let's, let's give it a number of one. And this is an extra bit of functionality which you haven't seen before, but you'll see it in the next videos. That's just what kind of waypoint it is. And this is just another enumerated list. And uh, I've just I've just made two for now. Just either a, a pause waypoint, so when the object gets there, it just pauses for X amount of time, or it just uses it as a sort of standard uh, waypoint and just then moves on to the next one. So I'll make this first point just a standard waypoint, and that'll default the pause time to zero. And uh, what I'll do then, I'll click on Add Additional Waypoints. So I'll call this next one. That just basically goes back. I'll call this one waypoint two, and I'll create this, and you'll see it. Then that'll appear in there. That'll give this one a name of waypoint number two. Uh, but this one I'm going to make as a pause. So as soon as you uh, select pause, it then brings up brings up another box saying how many seconds do you want this to pause for. So I'm going to be two, uh, and then you can add it again. Or, but I haven't added actually the functionality within the follower to sort out the pause yet. So. For now, I'm just going to change it back to waypoint. But basically, when you add a no waypoint, it just changes the pause for you and add a two in there. So uh, we'll add that. Also, the good thing about dragging it to a window here is once you've added it, you can click you can click outside this window. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add. I'm going to move waypoint two to there. 
And then I'm going to add another one. Let's add another one here. Let's add number three. We'll create another one. We'll create a waypoint. Number three. We're going to stick over here. And uh, I'll add another one. Last one. We'll add number four as well. And also, if you remember the gizmos in here, we had a W for a waypoint. Uh, I would add a pause one. That's not gonna. That's not actually gonna pause. Cause I haven't had, like, say, I haven't added the functionality. But I'll show you. You add waypoint uh, for pause. I'm gonna. I'm gonna move them over here, and uh, I'm gonna complete the block. So then it basically just goes back to the start. That block is now finished. So if I hit uh, create new block, that's just gonna create another. Like we just we just go over the same process that we've already done basically. And uh, as I made this one a pause block, if you remember, I added pause in there, I added my time, and it's actually changed uh, the gizmo to a P. And uh, that's nothing uh, drastic either, it's just within the gizmos directory. Instead of having the, the W, I've also just created one called uh, P. So uh, I've got a block now uh, with four waypoints in. So that's just streamlined the process of keep going up here and doing game object, you know, create empty game object. And then uh, basically all I need to do is in the follower just drag on the block that that follower actually sort of uh, relates to. It's relating to this block here. Um, that's going to be starting from waypoint one. Yeah, again, it turns so none of this is none of this has changed basically. So I'm just going to hit play. And uh, off she's going to go basically. So you know the the script. You know, it's nothing too, you know, it's nothing too major, but it does sort of aid some of the development of some of these sort of things, and uh, that's made creation of these sort of waypoint groups pretty, pretty streamlined. There, I must have to admit, I haven't put any sort of error checking. I've put no sort of try, no catch and statements in sort of try and catch it. So, like when it says enter your seconds for the pause. I'm relying on at the minute. I'm relying on you putting a sort of you know a new and you know a numerical value in there. If you start putting uh, counters in there, you know this may fall down. But you know as I'm the only one using this editor, I know to stick numbers in there. But you know if you were releasing this or you, you make it on yourself, you might want to put a sort of a try catch block or things in there just to sort of make sure people do enter numbers instead of just the characters. So anyway, that's, that's basically the sort of uh, the bare bones of the actual script. So in the next part, I'll show you basically uh, how we put that together you know like I said there's nothing that's something too uh, nice to look at and it's it's not the best code in the world no there is a million other ways to, to lay out GUIs better than what I've done so uh, but anyway I'll, I'll show you and then we'll take it from here so then we'll start moving on uh, to other things so thank you for watching this part